roster changes, going through so much, always being played as kind of the upper hand in all of their matches, not even ending in for G2, not even the first seed of EMEA. Now they're here showing that they're trying to make it to the finals. Both these teams have so much on the line and they're proving it time so and time done. again. Even just considering the fact that Liquid have gone through a gauntlet just earlier today. Yeah. Really no, no moment of respite to recover, to think things through, to make any adjustments. It's just kind of right back into the action. You see Liquid on the attacking side and it is going to be Daiki testing the waters mid. Unaware of the fact that there's a whole lot waiting on the other side. Daiki testing things out, and she's been spotted. She's been dropped. A great opener out from Sarah. They're going to take all this space mid, and they're going to be able to apply a lot of pressure on A. Yep, the post is going to be so important Spike here planted. because they have to push up and get that space, and we see two players on that heaven already waiting for that smoke. Issa's timing here is going to be huge. She's pushed all the way into spawn, and I don't know that Glance or the rest of them know that she's there. Oh. Roxy and Glance get two. There's the swing out. Aside of that response to two of her own. Just a couple of members now left for Liquid as they're trying to hold One them back. Mimi remain. and Sarah remain Last in this brutal second. 2v2, Ooh. and it just goes Liquid's way. A beautiful 3k from Vizetta. Oh my goodness. Again, that post knot was looking a little bit scary after losing Daiki in that beginning of the early round, but it was okay because they regrouped and they went together as a team. Daiki doing really good IGLing from the desk, but again, this post knot pushing up really gay. It's really great. It looked really scary for a second because of that flank, but it didn't matter. Zero with the 3k to just clutch it out. And again, you were talking about how this team just went through a whole war zone to get to here. Well, TL is warm. I would love yeah. to play this BO3 after just playing another BO3, especially coming off of a win. You have that momentum going into this game. I think the question becomes, how long will that momentum last, yeah. right? How long will it carry? Because again, they just went through a full BO3. It was a very stressful one with elimination on the line. So it weighs on you, right? It, it weighs on your mental, it weighs on your endurance, and I think that that ultimately be, that ultimately excuse me, becomes the name of the game here as Mimi is gonna fall. How far can they drag this momentum out? For sure, a free site for TL. They're gonna be flipping that site because they know, they've seen all three of the players behind them in B main. Really, really well played. But again, these players are just gonna try to get as many guns down as they can from G2. This is a winnable post time with the amount of useful they have, but as I say that, TL players dropping like flies. Sarah's manages to get one of her own, but Issa just showing that the 3K is there to stay. Another 3K. They're piling them up early. Yeah, patting their stats. Which is exactly what you want. Again, momentum is key. Getting these alts online early on is key as well. We'll see how much more of this they can balloon. Bezera three points away from having her ult online. Issa's halfway to having the lockdown. And those are, I mean, that's exactly how you want rounds like this to go, right? Keep yeah. it clean, get as many orbs as you can, and set eyes on what's next. Exactly, and now we're gonna head into that bonus round for Team Liquid. Full buys, half armor for the G2 side. Just a standard default coming in, setting in, setting up, sorry, that Killjoy into B main, getting that info and just poking and prodding as much as they can. Petra went up pretty far here. Also spotting Bazaar over in tiles. Petra's here by herself. There's no like flash setup or paranoia setup or anything like that for her. Yeah, after figuring out that the Killjoy is playing A, we see the TL team split onto Cat. They know it's weak pushing into heaven, but Mimi picks off a Stutter. A massive kill for her, but responded by Bazaar. Petra is doing her best to keep them back as well. Playing on the other side of the smoke, Eugenia just absolutely obliterated her. Fortunately for G2, Sarah still playing back site. Still playing down in hell, and you've got numbers of plenty. Not that they were required. Sarah gets three, and G2 are on the board. Three seems to be the lucky number <laughs> yeah. for both of these teams today. 3K after 3K. And now we are going to see the first gun round of this game. One orb off of that kill up for TL. They're probably going to do some sort of call to get it and end in some sort of split. But again, this hold was so beautiful from Sarah on that A site. I mean, TL did such a great job at finding the weakness right away. They knew that KJ was playing on that B side, and they were right. like, yeah, let's yeah. just split. So that kind of speedy reactions is kind of what we see when they're coming in from already being warmed up. And again, so like I said, they're going to be taking this aiming control, trying to get this orb on KO, and who knows where they're ending? But this trap is going to make it a little bit harder for them to do so. I'll tell you real quick who doesn't look cold. Sarah. <laughs> Sarah's started off 
I mean, with a great wow. beginning to this map. Currently sitting at 7-1, seven 7-2, and one, seven and two, something like that. But you can tell for, for G2, we just saw two different instances. One off of uh, Sarah and the other one we just saw off of Mimi. They're trying to do a really good job of setting Petra up to get her rolling and to find some success. That one was ultimately just her <laughs> and Bastardo on the swing. You were saying? Yeah. <laughs> but success for Petra nonetheless. Yep, the standard regroup after losing numbers. We've seen TL do this a bunch, and it is a good call because they are playing off that B side. They have this KO ult. It's not going to tag anyone. I mean, that KJ mid, but it's not enough because they are playing retake, and this is perfect from G2. Retaking that mid space, and they're going to set up the double or even the triple flank on that B main for this retake. Issa's going to have a lot to deal with. Back towards the presence, knife out. Not able to find any sort of value there. So you start to see some of this pressure and some of this control that Team Liquid have begin to alleviate. Only three members left on the site. <laughs> While they continue to get swarmed, G2 getting ever so close to taking the site back. Given the numbers advantage that they have, you see him start to swing out. Petra with three on the round already. Sarah and Roxy clean things up. We're tied at two apiece. I mean, that was such a hard round for TL to hold on the site because they had players coming in from spawn, from market, and from b -Bay. They needed desperately to get some sort of space or to have some sort of setup towards one side of that map. But unfortunately, G2 just way too quick with it. Beautiful reactions down mid. This pick was really, really great. As soon as they knew that they had that aiming control and no one else was coming, the quick reactions to push down mid, Perfectly well played by G2. And again, just scaling together the timing as a team. We were talking about TL being warm, but G2 looks like their teamwork is really warm coming into this. Sarah has her ult online. Petra's one away from Blades. Issa, we mentioned a couple of rounds ago, close to having the lockdown still. A lot of investment mid. Yo, those are the best. Those are the best kills where you just like spam into a smoke and you're yep. gifted two free kills. What do you mean? You don't see the outline? <laughs> she, I mean, if she saw it, it worked. Daiki with the sheriff. You have two rifles left on the side of Liquid, but I mean, the round has already gone so sideways. Yeah, I mean, it's so hard to come back from this amount of bodies Here. dropping so quick in the round. You didn't even have a chance to default and get space. But again, the only kind of option that they have is either grouping up or playing for these picks. And we see them going towards that cat, which so far from G2 has been pretty weak almost all of these rounds. So TL kind of abusing that sort of information, hopefully abusing rotations, just walking up together, contacting, trying to find a pick of their own. But Petra, she's so aware. She knew that that was something that they're trying to do. Did not let that happen and now the split has to go a lot faster because they all know that they're there. Well, and even with that, look at how like patiently G2 are playing this. Yeah. They know that they've lost A, but they know they have numbers advantage. They know they can lean into those strengths. Left. This is Spike masterful planted. calling from G2 right now. Yep, keeping that cat control from Jujina might be a little bit of a saver for them. But again, a is fully gone. Daiki going for the push, but Roxy with the instant trade. Smoke out. Petra dropped. 3v2. Issa has ult. Do you invest it in a situation oh, like oh, this? Hello. Oh, that could have been really bad. But ultimately, it works out. G2 is going to get the defuse. I'm surprised that they played that the way that they did. And I mean, there was a free kill teed up, unfortunately, not coming through. But the defense will take the lead. It's OK, Jujina. We've all been there. We saw it. Don't worry about it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it was OK. It was just a guardian. You know, but yeah, again, this first spray down was brutal from yeah. Petra. This is so unfortunate because TL didn't make a mistake. Let's go, let's go, let's go. They just walked. G2 just got kind of lucky. Yeah. They just walked up. They're trying to default. Now I hope they learn their lesson. They're going to be using a lot more util on that take, but not much else you can do. And now we're looking like a standard default again. We do have this KJ lockdown. They're looking to get into that B main, but they don't know that Petra's here waiting for them with this operator. First time we've seen it this map. That flash to give the aggressive angle, and it's perfect. But Petra's in trouble. She can't see a thing. She's trying to dash out, trying to find safety, and is unable to find it. It was a really good counter punch out from uh, out from Liquid. Both teams going so quick that the Utah was just absolutely perfect. I mean, from TL, that was a wonderful masterclass yeah. of a round. And now, with this reaction, we're going to see them trying to get some sort of info, just holding, trying to see if G2 tries to walk up and make a mistake so they can get more numbers and just solidify the round. But, I mean, clock is ticking, one minute left, and they're going to be regrouping towards that mid. 
They have so many tools that they can work with. It's almost like having it, it's a good problem to have, yeah. but having this abundance of options on how you want to play the round out can prove to be paralyzing at times. Yeah, G2 taking this A main space because they know they need to do something, get some sort of number, hope they catch someone off guard, but look at that. <gasps> oh, I thought she was going to be patient. Oh. Drop down, Georgina somehow still gets a second. That'll crack things wide open. 30 seconds left. I mean, G2, they have plenty of money, so really no reason not to go for it. Quite planted. But we'll see what they choose to do. A beautiful round from Liquid to go all the way back to understanding that there would likely be pressure from Petra. That's one down. Yeah, understanding there would likely be pressure from Petra, understanding how you want to dissuade that and kind of break some of that timing and put Petra in a bad spot to the execution there. It's just been a beautiful round from Liquid. Yeah, for sure. And you're going to feel kind of grim because as Pe as Petra tried to push and try to get Revealing that sp space, it got instantly denied. I mean, Mid has worked for her really well. A has worked for her really well. So I wonder if G2 is going to switch it up a little bit towards that B main side, see if they can try to do something different to punish that. I mean, I don't think that um, TL is going to be doing the same thing again where they just like hard punish B main right off the right, bat again. Right. But we'll see. We'll have yeah. to see. Because that operator, Roxy saving is actually pretty big. They can still get picks off of that. They can still work the map off of that. And especially with these knives, like it's almost perfect for Petra to take that off. Take a look at that opening moment one more time. There was a barrage of utility flashes, shock darts from both sides, and the aforementioned failed dash into the wall that made it to where there was no easy escape and nowhere to go. For Liquid, I think, again, we've got to point out the fact that they are coming out from another series. They still look warm. They still look comfortable. They, they are not showing any signs of fatigue or anything like that. For Sharon, looking like a straight up A main hit. Petra with that off. We were just talking about it. Instantly gets the first pick. And now TL just put a break on what they were trying to do. Possibly farming their orb once again. But again, they're down numbers. It feels like both these teams are so good at getting these first bloods so early on in the game that it's making it hard for either team to adapt. Yeah, it looked like. I, I would love to see that again because it looked like Liquid tried playing out onto A pretty dry, it, but it wasn't contacting. They weren't slow about it. Yeah, there was, I, mean, I would, yeah, I would love to yeah, take a they, look at that again. They used util, but it was weird because it just kind of like peeked out. Oh, yeah, like I had a things for sure. But G2 just cleaning Spike up this round. Mid. Roxy and Sarah getting those picks. Jujuna getting caught off in that A main by the Petra just holding with that operator. And now it's all down to Issa. I ever tell you about the time Issa won that 1v5? It wasn't this time. It wasn't right. this time. <laughs> no, it was it was not this time. Oh, oh yeah, I remember. <laughs> G2 take the lead right back. Again, we, we continue to see the, this back and forth affair between these two squads. G2 looking comfortable. They're really having their way now as they continue to unlock Petra to put her in positions of success. Yep, and now we still have the KJ lockdown. I mean, this B main worked wonderfully for them. Defaulting has been okay for TL. I mean, it's been pretty back and forth with the first bloods, like we've said, depending on where Petra wants to set up her op. And I think at this point in time, we want to see TL kind of figure out where she's setting up her op, playing it slow, just getting that information with the Sova drone, because at this point, that op is showing to be a threat. They have four members of the defense on B here. The drone to pave the way. She's tagged. Yo. That, that, that damage gets old. <laughs> Anybody? Any any turret clears? Help me out here. Yeah, that turret was wall hacking. Yeah. That was crazy. So where do they go from here? They use the drone to get her into an aggressive angle. They do still have a really nice trap side. Mimi's playing with Cubby right now. They just knife to confirm that there is still presence here. And it's not like Liquid have gotten enough space to where they could pop off of this. There's still so much room they have to grab. Yeah, she hit it. Should run. And again, they don't know that Mimi's here. This is perfect. Mimi gets two. Spike the nade down. should destroy the lockdown. Petra One trying to get high ground and help with the blades over the top. Three on the round for Mimi. What a gorgeous set by G2. That was a really nice setup. The bait by the op getting the first kill, dashing off. 
the rest of the team pushing up into that B main. I mean, it, you come to think that maybe G2 Red, that KJ lockdown, was meaning that TL was going to end towards yeah. B. And I think that's a pretty good assumption to make, and it obviously played out well for them. They gambled towards that site, like you said, four stacked towards B. And that was just so wonderfully played, so patient from Mimi and Cheat Map, literally just a BO3 ago. So it it might be playing a factor in this, where they're understanding the tendencies and the habits of how they're playing. But, I mean, G2 getting that operator online so early on on their defense side, I think has definitely been the game changer, because you're right, it has been five rounds almost in a row. It's it's hard to get that get momentum back way. for TL. You're gonna try to go faster outside of that using the blades. They've invested into this here too. They're bringing four rifles into the round. Light armor on all. They've lost mid. They have no idea of what's happening mid. And I think because of that, Liquid have to take the longer route. Bullshit. Yep, full space taken in mid. This is so dangerous. I mean, everyone is playing retake Slide towards retreat. that B, which is fine because they have that KO ult. Mm -hmm. They have the op to kind of hold that aggressive line. And now mid is just so open. Uh, and taking advantage uh, oh, of wow. the that gets the kill onto Glam. Oh, that was ridiculous. I don't know how she, I mean, they were set up for it. Lance was in such a good spot. But they continue to push forward. The problem is Petra and Roxy are ahead of this. They're already here. Jujina has a chance to make something ridiculous happen. Roxy had no idea where she was. Petra was there on the trade. But Bazaar's trade proved to be the final one. G2, again, did an awesome job, excellent yeah. job of denying that mid space. It just wasn't executed well. Yeah, I mean, TL, they didn't even need to use that much util, just the, sp the jump spot. And then the wide swing with the jet knives was enough to catch a G2 player off guard. I mean, here, just catching the player in the fridge. Super unfortunate for Glass, but at the same time, this play, this trap off cat, the flash perhaps missing. It looked like G2 had a solid plan, but the fact that TL just walked out and got that first kill, that was not planned. That was not part of it. Take and so just shutting that down is really good. And then this default, I mean, this is what they need now, knowing that this mid space has been taken a lot of rounds in a row. This drone is going to get them all that information needed. I mean, they know that Soba is stuck in pizza. Lance is feeling a lot of pressure here. Nike has a Hunter Fury, but they didn't have to use it. Lance had nowhere to go. And it seems like they're going to continue to push forward. Trampling up mid. The thing is, there are a couple of members of, the, of G2 behind them. Nike's alone. That's huge. That's a spike. There's no one to help her. They're going to have to rally back deal with the space that's been lost, and try to recover the spike, but what a mess up around you. Gene is in their spawn, G2's in liquids, everything has gone backwards, Mimi's left alone. A 1v2 now, a difficult one at that, and it will not come through to fruition. We're tied at five. I mean, this is crazy because TL just won the last two rounds coming off of the G2 right, timeout. Man. That's not what you want. I mean, it was an interesting timeout. After winning so many rounds, you think you want to keep that momentum up but I guess they had something they really wanted to talk about. But again, another timeout coming in from G2. Oh wait, the first time it was we TL got, actually. We got trolled. Yeah, we yeah, did yeah. get trolled. We, we got trolled, we got hard trolled. But you know what, all good? All good. All good. It was Liquid who called a timeout previously and now the story makes a lot more sense. Yeah, that makes me, okay, that makes more sense. TL's timeout doing really good work for them because they're instantly fixing a lot of those mistakes, a lot of those gaps. I mean, Jujuna is doing a great job at lurking and even though they do lose numbers towards that mid, they're well aware that G2 has been in love with fighting men. Yeah. They're aware that there's some sort of trap setups. As soon as the drone caught wind of someone playing in that pizza, there was a dart, there was a molly, there was a flash, there was someone wide. Honey, all things considered, and the Hunter Siri out for Daiki too. But they, it looks like they're going to be pushing into this op line again. You know, we, we talked about this a couple of rounds ago, the setup that, the, that Petra had right with here. Mimi. A little bit of a different flavor, right a little here. variation, if you will. But they're going to be pushing right into the teeth of this. It all depends on how pacey they're going to the be with them. Both teams fighting for this B main. This operator is online, but the flash is not going to hit Petra with the first blood. And now this is how G2 has capitalized every single round. Whichever team has gotten these first bloods, it's felt like it's gone that way towards that team. So. Yeah. TL, they really need to come up with a plan to refight, but the extremity on A has been pushed as well. The omen is in wine and KO just spotting. Mimi and Sarah waiting close by. And you can see the setup. There's a pair of, I guess, a one way and then maybe a paranoia. 
for Sarah. She's patient with it. That's there's not gonna be anything to clear that nano. So the paranoia provides safe passage for her to get out. Liquid have frozen on this, and I'm really surprised that G2 haven't taken some more space, given some of what they've just seen A. Yep, KJ's still on that B. I mean, rotating the Sova here is a really good call because they no know that there's so much on. pressure here. And the Hunter's Fury actually is coming out. Petra missed the first shot. She missed the second as well. Basarda was there to punish, but Sarah still causing problems backside. A 2v2, and they're surrounded once more. Liquid are going to have to deal with everything coming from either side. The Hunter's Fury out from Glance will deny the plan. At least for the time being, with 17 seconds left, nothing else really to keep that back for now. Best out of that, I don't know that she knows, but she procs the dash and should be able to get to safety. Roxy with some utility in Nano. The lockdown too, do you invest it here? Knowing that you don't have the Hunter's Fury on the other side? No, instead she's playing for distraction. Drops the turret, tries to draw eyes, tries to draw attention and focus and let Glance get into a better position. Roxy winning the first, it's gonna have to be Glance. Glance is healthy, Daiki is not by any means, but it does not matter. What a 3K from Daiki. The IGL of Team Liquid. She was on fire last BO3 and she's on fire in this first map as well, because what a round. Again, we were, I literally just said that whoever gets the first blood wins the round. I apologize, <laughs> Team Liquid, because I was wrong. I mean, what a way to bring it back. G2 staying way too long in that setup towards A main. They baited, baited so much of their util out. TL baited so much of G2's util out. They knew that they were in a weird setup. They had to fall back to site. They knew they didn't have that paranoia to delay. Like, it was such a weird round for G2. They had the opening kill, they had all the information, and they still stuck to a setup for way too long. But Petra, understanding that she could be pushed up towards B main here, but this turret has been a threat, man. Someone just break it for Petra. Well, it's crazy, too, is they just tried, right? Roxy threw the nano over the top to try to clear out the turret, but it was, it was shot out by Issa, so that will continue to be a problem. Now Roxy's no longer around. And if I'm not mistaken, yeah, she had a lockdown. Last round of the half, massive tool, Five not around, but Mimi and Sarah certainly still are. Bastarda and Nisa left to figure out what went so wrong as Mimi's not able to spot. convert. And once again, it feels like G2 has a numbers advantage. They have some control of the situation, and it's just one little thing. Go sideways, and all of a sudden, Liquid are back in it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, walking up, taking that A main Here. space, so smart when they've Spike lost planted. the you space towards B main. They've known that it was contested, but... They just retook space, I mean, so played well again by G2. They got the kills, but then staying, overstaying their welcome and allowing that team to get the trade towards them. That is so rough, but they know that they're on the flank. Glance has a lot of util. Oh, but it doesn't matter. Glance swings out and gets both. My. No way. Glance, what a crazy shot. Crazy amount of shots there. Wow. This is so... Close. I mean, 6-6. Six, six. This is literally as close as it could be. Both these teams playing amazingly. It seems like G2 understands and is trying to play the map in the way that they play. They get these beautiful, beautiful frags, these kills, these trades. But again, over the one enemy remaining. That's it delayed for a while, but Glance, technically, that should not have been around for G2. No. But again, Glance could be a lot of stress, a lot of maybe scared, maybe. Uh, not fully confident, you know what I mean? But both these teams showing that that doesn't matter. They know that they're playing for the grand final spot and they're hungry for it. And that's why these rounds are so, so close. I mean, 6-6, six, six, that is literally the closest it can be. But this attack side looking like it's gonna be a poke and prod towards A as they're contacting up towards the side. They know the Killjoy's turret over there. The crazy thing is, too, this turret, I mean, is so far up, you really have to commit if you want to clear that thing, and that is exactly what Liquid wants. They're going to want to take these fights. Isa, with a classic from Hell, by the way, is able to clean up Petra. And this defense seems to be holding up just fine. I wonder if they're... Yeah, they're going to try to flip. Roxy was still playing mid, but you've got to be careful because Bastarda's on the flank, and I don't know if she's been hurt! Oh, it's not going to matter. It's only one. And now we find ourselves in a really awkward situation. You still have a little under a minute, uh, yeah, a little bit under a minute left in the round with plenty of options. Liquid, unsure of that, have to divide their resources and leave a couple B and a couple A. 
Yeah, 4v2 though for Liquid. Surely they just wait for each other, play it smart. This retake should be in the bag because G2 have to do something crazy here. And crazy. 30 seconds left. Crazy? I was crazy once because I pushed into the CC smoke to get this kill. And Roxy playing so close. Oh my goodness. No push, nothing. They're just going to group up and go out together on the TL side. Will they be disciplined enough to check? Note it's just a classic. How dis. Oh. Or excuse me, it was just oh. a sheriff and Roxy with two. Tries to land the third and she cannot, but so much help, so much work has been oh. done. It does not matter though. Jujina saves the day. Oh, that was insane. That was such a crazy round. But TL originally playing us so beautifully. This crossfire on B. I mean, we had Issa so ready to hold the left side of sight because she knew that her right side of sight was held by Jujina. Such beautiful team play on that side. They knew that they had it on lock. And then this reaction to come out four out of spots. Yes, it was a bit weird. Yes, they got two. Kill two bodies down, but they still stuck together. They knew it was a 42 and they had numbers and they had bodies and the coaches and their girls just showing how much excitement there is. And we were talking about them not slowing down. I mean, I think those camps literally speak for themselves. I would love to know what the coaches were saying to each other <laughs> just then. Can we, we can do this. Yeah. We can do this? Yeah, we can do this. A huge start, Daiki has an Aries. They're invested into this a little bit. Roxy with the Sheriff Petra is going to be the first to fall. Bye. It's really, I mean, it's armor on Roxy too. One enemy but remains. the armor melts just as quickly as G2 does. A 4K for Bezerra. We talked about padding stats early on in these eco rounds. Now two away from having the lockdown early in the second half. Yeah, a beautiful hold from coming in from TL. I mean, the KO Molly to delay, everything was just so quick, so ready to come support the team. I mean, G2 tried to push towards that cat. They used the paranoia. They ran up together, but there's nothing they can do. And there's a KO Molly just sitting there, ready to take down your health, chunk down that health, and delay for so long that the rest of TL is back. <laughs> And if anyone can translate that, let me know, because we're going to start screaming that soon. If TL win another round here on this bonus. I can listen to this crowd. My Portuguese is not perfect, but it sounded like the coaches were at, like asking for Brazil to support them, to have their back. And that's exactly what the crowd does. Just a standard default it. here from both teams. We actually have two players on the defense side playing in spawn, ready to quick rotate. They're playing back towards mid, expecting some sort of rush. But the drone towards B main is going to put so much pressure when there's just Sova here holding the site on their own. Yeah, she's alone. Why are they playing so far off? They're convinced that it's going to be a split through market, but now they're starting to rotate over. The thing is, they've lost the site. Petra so far up. But Bazzari hits an insane timing window. He falls. So goes the rest of the site, but Vasarda continues to be a problem. Roxy now jumping down with spike in hand, trying to clear out back site. Oh my goodness, Roxy gets one with the turret too. She's gonna have to do it on her own though. The second kill. Nice easy to save the day there. How does she play this out? Spike has been ticking for a little bit. I'd love to see her POV here. Thank you. Both there, and none of them connect. Three for Bezerra Roxy had an outrageous round, but this is huge for Liquid. Yeah, it is huge. That bonus round was actually wild. It didn't look so promising. They had just Sova on site, but like I said, the two players playing towards that spawn, they were ready to quick rotate. They were ready to fast flood. And actually, Bastarda ended up dashing into site in order to support her team. And I think that is something that shows how fast that TL plays. We've seen their fast floods. We've seen their fast retakes. And that's exactly what puts them above other teams when it comes to specifically retaking, even when they don't have numbers. And for this next round, it's going to be... You just have to continue to plot forward, and that's exactly what they've done. On the other side of the timeout, we've got Bezerra, who's got the ult online. And it's a very, very split standard setup from the defense. Yeah, and Daiki with this Odin, we've seen her put in so much work, but it's looking like they're setting up for Odin spam towards that tiles. And little mm -hmm. does G2 know is that there are two players heading Standing. over there. Standing ahead. That was a really early paranoia off of the dart to find the target. Petra took some damage. 
But that's all it was. That could have been disaster. Yep, well read by TL, but unlucky for the timing because it was a little bit too early. If they gave them a couple more seconds to walk up, would have been great to catch them off guard. All this information for G2, they break that alarm bot, and now TL is going to have to have some sort of answer. An answer they do have because their jet is pushed up ball. all the way up in A main. They have all that space and all that info. Holy free info. You're absolutely right. It does seem like G2's aware of that, though. Sarah's crouched and waiting for the aggression. Carrying precious cargo, though. The spike in hand. There's no there's no way they know. There's no way they know anymore. There's no way they know! Asada strikes at just the right time, and once again, G2 left in disarray. Roxy's trying to creep of B to try to find some space there. And it does look like where they're going to end, but as soon as she shows any pixel, she's dropped. And you see it now having to pivot once more. We're on plan C or plan D at this point. Pick. Yeah, I mean, that setup was absolutely beautiful because off of the mid pressure, Bastarda taking her A main presence, and now she's ready to fight this cat slip. Daiki here with the Odin. Bastarda's there with it as well. A prime gaming flawless for Team Liquid as they're up four. I love this Odin on Daiki. I think Daiki's Odin is something that is really fun to watch, especially on this ascent. She's done so good with it so far. And this flank, oh my goodness, Bastarda taking all the space. I mean, G2, wow. they have holes in their attack, and TL is not struggling to find them at all. They're putting pressure in the early round and then rotating based on that. And G2 into their traps. They know that the alarm bell was towards mid. They're trying to default towards it, but they're being fast enough. Just unreal timing. Bastard having to use the dash to stay away and concealed for now. Does she dare re-peek here? You see the buy for G2, it's not great. Glance has a bulldog, sheriffs the rest of the way. The alarm bot's yeah. keeping things back for now. Mimi the first to fall. Petra shortly thereafter joining. They're going to try to push mid, and it's, uh, it's a Sabda show. That's three on the round already. The one real gun that they had to fight back with sits harmlessly on the ground. Six bullets no left, and left. technically, there is an ace on the cards. If she can pull it off, that's four on the round. Eugenia takes it, but it's back-to-back -back prime gaming flawlesses for Team Liquid. Eugenia has been the ace stealer today yeah, on multiple low key. accounts, but... Again, G2 looking so disconnected in that mid. They have so much util to use, but they're not using it. I mean, the dart was broken. We hear the dash away. We know there's an alarm bot close, and yet we're still running up dry. We're not using flashes. We're not using drones up close. The peaks are so disconnected one by one. They're just feeding these kills to Bastarda. And of course, Bastarda, she is warm because those shops were crispy. 18 and 12 for the duelist with, we imagine, more to come. Blades online this time, too. And G2 have lost, what's, what's that, what, five rounds in a row? Now. Six rounds in a row now, it's been rough. They haven't been able to find any success and it's not getting any better. Tip of the spear blunted, attack neutered, and now what? Yep, that first blood going towards TL, and they're not afraid to keep hold of that space. But instead of full fighting for a main, they move two players towards back because they know that they've put way too much pressure there, enough to push away the other team. Now the shot going towards mid, they're trying to break this alarm bot, but they just missed it, unfortunately. And heading back towards Cat is not a good sign. And Sarah just getting caught off guard. She needs to be ready for that. Bastarda push, she is feeling it. Hey, that's the second time she just takes this free space and gets a kill for it. And both times it was on Sarah. This has fallen apart so quickly. And, you know, honestly, this this feels like the most dominant defensive side performance we've seen uh, on Ascent this tournament, right? When, it, when a defense is locked in for whatever reason on this map in particular, it feels so suffocating. It feels so devastating. There's no success anywhere to be found. And honestly, Liquid right now are running circles around G2. Yeah, I mean, they're winning rounds the same way that Daiki is suppressing fire with this Odin because they are just winning round after round after round and looking so dominant. I mean, at this point, G2 needs to figure out how to put a stop to Bastarda. She is the support pillar of this team with those first bloods, with those setups.
with the way that she's rotating or re-pushing or re-walking up into that A main. They need an answer for this A main as well. They have not been able to take it successfully yet. This crowd is going absolutely nuts right now. Blades online, Hunter Fury 2 looking to put the finishing touches on this map is Liquid and it's aggression once more. They've given up A, but there's a massive flank coming around. By side of that gets a first on the glance for the third round in a row, killing somebody who doesn't get a chance to fight back. And the smoke, the only thing keeping them back. She's gone aggressive, she's going forward, she's going forward and she finds another. Sarah on the counter, but where do you go from here? She's gone behind them! Sarah with three, what a counter! But can they close out the round? They have numbers advantage, but it's just one. The lockdown on Roxy, she is gonna be towards that B main, playing in a safe spot, able to put it down in whatever, in whatever time that she needs because they need to secure this round. They literally need this you round. Daiki run. gonna start the retake noise with her own, but Jujina with a crazy one shot to one Sarah remaining. Petra here ready to deny. And Roxy coming out and swinging with that crossfire, denying the plant. The KJ lockdown is gone, is but nice. they did secure the round. Dude, Sarah's, Sarah's TP out of the smoke behind them is, I mean, that's a, that's insane. That's insane. <laughs> That's actually insane, like TikTok type omen plays. Literally a Giga Chad omen move. Like if there was a Giga Chad omen move, that's the one. TPing behind your enemies, knowing that there's a very small chance they could be just staring at you. That was really great by Sarah, really cool micro plays. And now we have Mimi with that KO ult. They're looking towards mid once again, trying to see if they can capitalize off of this. So much noise towards that mid, using their util, putting a smoke down, and Cat is ready up for free. Liquid are doing such a good job of playing this defensive half. Even little things like destroying the turret on B main, knowing how many times G2 have been flanked from the extremities, it's a threat. And that's all it is, and it's a, such a free threat. All it took was a dart. And that comes back. There's no investment on this. Bizarra actually pushing up towards that main, but Bastarda has done it so many times, you'd think that they would expect it and punish it, but Sarah still not ready for it. But while that was happening, Roxy just getting two for free on B. They don't even know that the but the spike is still in spawn. Using the element of surprise, I guess, because Glance is nowhere near the site. You're absolutely right. But Bizarra continues to push forward up Cat now. And it feels like we've had a couple of rounds like this. This, this is a really messy round. It's a little sideways. They don't really know where to go. This is far from conventional. Issa's left alone in a 1v3, as it seems like we're going to play another one. Barring heroics from the Killjoy. A 1v2. She has lockdown. Mimi not able to pop her ult beforehand to counter it. So Issa's going to have a lot of room and a lot of time. And oh my god. Mimi almost gets caught. Issa now pushing the pace, the flash is good. Is clear. And it's playing it in a position where Issa's gonna have to do so much. She's creeping forward. Athena, she's creeping forward, she's gonna take these fights! Oh. And they don't go her way, Mimi's there to greet G2, stay alive. Wow, that was a wild round to watch. I mean, on the minimap we see players in spawn, players in the other side of spawn, players in cap, players on site. These two kills from Roxy doing work for G2 because that was a round winning play from Rice. Those three Ks were so, so important. Like they had so many players towards A and so many players ready to fight that TL and deny. And it was just so, so well played. And now we're coming into this round. We're doing another default yet again from G2 sticking to their guns. They have that K out. they have knives. They know that they're gonna be finding a lot of pressure. Now setting up Mimi towards Cat has been their kind of beginning early round play and it hasn't really done much yet but i'm wondering if they're going to try to end towards a with this ko ult they've really struggled to alleviate some of this pressure this killjoy pressure mid the alarm on finally goes down but the drone spots too g2 with some options here though mimi has her ult which could obviously pave the way if they can find out where the Sentinel setup is. Yeah, they know that the alarm bot was mid. That's often where it is. But they don't really have confirmation of anything else right now. 
Yep, yeah, the knife trying to get some info. They know that cat is clear. They know that this is some free space to be had. Mimi just peeking into A, putting enough pressure to have some players stay towards that A side, but they have all of A main. This is not pressure not enough pressure from the G2 side in order to pull any of these rotates because KJ just sitting in spawn, chilling. I mean, she knows that there's something up. The turret is there, Petra breaks it, and the split starting. Petra's pushing B, but they've popped the ult and they're gonna try to go A. The lurk has been dealt with and now they just have to deal with what's in front of them. G2 a little bit battered here, but they find some space. Jujina falls, Daiki has ult, but just five HP. This is going to be a hard one, and looking like TL is going to go. Yeah, yeah, they're going to go for a save. Like, that makes sense. 12 8, about to be 12 9. They only need one more round. Now, that round, Doug, G2 played it really, really wonderfully. Right they knew they had all this mid space, and instead of just taking it and doing a regular split, split they left Petra in that spot towards top mid. She broke the alarm bot, she broke the turret, she put so much pressure in, smoked herself off, ran in, threw herself into the action. She didn't manage to get one, I believe, but it doesn't matter because the rest of her team was splitting right. up towards Cat. They pulled those rotates, they pulled all that attention away from the Cat split, and they were just so ready to fight for it that it looked like TL was just like not ready at all. They yeah. kind of like pulled a fast one on them, and I think that was a really great round for me too. You see the hit out on site. You were just talking about what Petra was playing on the other side. Mimi just found so much room, and obviously Roxy did too. They need to find a new way to go around this. What's the call on the other side of the timeout? Again, Daiki has the Hunter's Fury. Jujina has her ult too. And it seems like they just want to play a little soft on B. Issa dropping some utility. G2 haven't really seemed concerned or interested in like a, a fast like five man hit or anything like that. They've they've been very content, honestly. Some comeback and a little bit. They've managed to deal with the fact that there's constant in the extremities. That's really slowed Liquid down. Yeah. It feels like they knew that TL doesn't know how to deal with this mid pressure unless they have that operator. Now that knife scanning two players towards mid. They were set up for that mid setup, but it doesn't matter because the mid trap is broken. They've stacked towards the A side. TL knows that this is where G2 is trying to end. Oh, what a flash and what a swing. Goes unpunished. Petra tries to get another, but she swings into four. It's all crumbling on the other side of the timeout. You're absolutely right. Liquid put G2 away, potentially in flawless fashion. The crowd comes back to life as things are closed out. lean into this dark horse opportunity if they're able to take down G2 on what would be G2's map. Yeah, no four duelist comp, but we do have the Astra, so it is going to be a little bit of a different comp on either side to see how they fight, and the A main fight is so strong. Four players from either side fighting towards here, and it's going to go the way of TL 4v2. What a banger of a yeah. start. It really feels like Liquid are just getting everything falling their way at just the right time. Boxes Even just screen, winning yeah. that, I mean, you know it's gonna be a scrap A main at the yeah. beginning, right? Like, that, that's just kind of standard with the way that the map plays. It just goes so perfectly for Liquid. It's not even that they walked away with the numbers advantage. They're all healed back up. Yeah. They have ghosts. They, they have so many things that are in their favor right now. Yeah, G2 trying to walk up and see if they can 
get some sort of info without full fighting and prodding as much as they can, but Sarah in behind gets Issa, and now it's down to a 4v3, but again, like you said, so much Yuto. They've cleared the turret. They still have the Astro Yuto they're gonna have to deal with. The gravity well, daring the swing. There's no like, oh, actually there is a, a bit of a flank here, but they're not careful about it. Sarah with one, that's all it's gonna be. Another pistol in favor of Liquid. They, I believe they won the first two too, didn't they? Yeah. What a jump scare for Daiki. Yeah. Winning pistol seems to be TL's game today. They are going to start with the Vandal right away on this era. This is really good because Lotus is such a long range map, right? You want to take these long range fights, especially as a Sentinel where you can hold down the site against a team where the only space that they can make is with Petra with those satchels. Right. It's going to be super important. Um, team Liquid. Really, really Ooh. solid showing so far. The way they played, the way they set up ceiling, the way that they had detail for everything, and that's why I like this Astra as well. Like playing that, playing that post can be so much stronger than DG. Oh, that Guardian's tough at that distance, but fortunately, Bazaar is there to help. The turret was involved in the action. Now everybody kind of clumping up and seeing if they can get any kills, pad their stats, get closer to their ults. One remains. Ooh, is that a little? Uh, a little shooting of the body? Is, is that what I saw there? Ooh. Oh my. Yeah, I think it was. I think we just maybe saw it again. Oh my. <laughs> yeah, Liquid's uh, off that prime gaming flaws. Liquid is feeling it. The crowd is too. I mean, they realize what's at stake right now. Remember, last year, third place finish, and now an opportunity to exceed that. Yeah, Bezera just standing outside of that B main with that Vandal, putting it to work. We were just talking about long-range duels and long-range duels. It was. And yes, Doug, third place finish. You want to break that curse. And when is the time to do it? It is now. But they do have the giants of G2 to face. Now, this heavy, heavy aiming control from this defense side is probably going to cause some sort of rotation from the attack side. You don't want to fight it. At the end of the day, they do have a little bit more on util on the defense side with that paranoia and with those nades to hold it down. But retaking towards yeah. the C is going to be a really, really good call. There is a double sentry here, though. They need to use a lot of util to get out onto that site. Tapping of the door, some KJ Util B. They're playing pretty far up too. That smoke is gonna spot one, but that's all it was. It seems like Petra's gonna take the long way around and try to apply some pressure from heaven. They're scaling really far up. You know? They just wanna take these fights, they wanna scrap, and this bonus would be huge for Liquid if they can pull it off, and so far, so good. Yep, I mean, taking that space so smart because, again, you get to play these post plants where you have the Asta Star to be the initial delay, and then you have the Mollies. But Petra's here no to shot. save the day with two kills. Glance is getting another, but time has time been ticking away a little bit here. Jujina with no armor. Mimi weak. Lands a shot anyway. It's got to be Daiki, of course. Who else? She's been a hero. Oh, that swing was gross. But it's not going to be enough. Don't even that G2, a massive round. That was wild. It did not look like G2 was going to win that round, but they did. Still, Doug, that was such an expensive round. Luckily for G2, they have been doing this by where they only get half armor. We still have the Ares on Roxy, which I think could work, especially as a Senti on that C side. If you set up, you spam off your util, not much to be worried about, but Petra absolutely saving the move because that was looking like an amazing post -time for TL. They still had an Astro Star left. They still had two players alive it was looking so so good but Petra again wow satchels forward flashes out and TP's up they've taken all of that space towards a already meanwhile the rest of liquid are exploring B the dog already drawn out for Mimi and now an inevitable pause in the action oh me so close to finding one but it's my son who wins that duel out TL has been doing amazing at putting pressure in this front B, taking the space. They know it's not super heavily contested. And now that they got that pick onto B, it's going to be so easy for them to regroup and just hit. But Yuta dropping, trying to poke and prod towards that A side. It's going to cause TL to commit towards that B. And commit they do. The satchel forward 
the alarm bot deep. And they're going to be able to deal with the flank that's inevitably coming from G2. You see it on the minimap. Mimi and Glance both trying to take some of the space away. The turret covering things. Gina precariously placed. The paranoia gives everything away. So well considered. But Daiki's there to help. And you still have Bizarro who's playing far off. It's all left on a glance now. Shadows traveling. It's just not interested. Yeah, just not that interested. Was Kinda hard for G2 to win that round out again. I am sounding like a broken record, but these close times with TL are so important. G2 need to deny the space a lot earlier. I mean, they tried walking up and fighting that B main, but they just did it without any util. And again, G2 just getting caught off guard. They allow that first pick to go. I mean, the trade, they tried retaking space towards that A line, but unfortunately TL already had four players in front of B ready to react together. They're just waiting to see if Issa could find something, waiting to see if she could unlock some sort of crazy lurk so they could potentially fake or potentially right. end towards A or do a split, but instead just the reactions. And again, the space that they take, the way that they play post plan, it's clear that they're picking this comp for a reason. And it's clear that G2 needs to do something a little bit more aggressive to fight for that B main. Well, that's what they're doing. You have three set up here. Paranoia set up off of Glance, you imagine. But Liquid not interested in that area of the map right now. Although, Jujina could be caught on the rotate because G2 have taken so much of the space already and she understands there's pressure. She knows that she's being surrounded. The question is, what do the rest of Liquid do off of this? Roxy's in a really good spot, but just really doesn't have the weaponry to fight back with. Yeah, that dog getting info onto the KJ, but it's not enough for G2 to do anything off of Mimi getting a kill, but the rest of her team dropping, and now the full sight is free. They can try to get this Jujina. They know that she was really late towards the safe site. The problem, I mean, Glance has upgraded a weapon. Mimi's gotten another run. kill. Ooh. They're investing the lockdown here. Perhaps not not feeling comfortable with what's standing. kind of been going on. You see a couple of things start to slip away, and it's just better to play it safe, invest, and make sure you secure the round. That's exactly what Liquid do. And every round that passes, every round that Liquid wins, every step that they get closer to the grand final, this crowd gets a little bit louder. Yeah, the crowd, absolutely crazy. And for a reason, TL playing so well. Yeah. So put together on this map really almost. Good. They definitely came up with a game plan. They knew what they wanted, forcing G2 to play their game. The second that they're trying to find them and pick up the breadcrumbs and find their trails, they're not there. They're somewhere else. And they're abusing the gaps that they've created for G2. And now, this one for lead, looking pretty scary. But Mimi, she has those secrets. We have have Petra's they ult. They're setting up towards some sort of B Just main hit down, or B main win. pressure, so maybe this is going to be a battle. It has the potential to be explosive right off the bat if they get just what they're looking for. Yeah. What's the cue? You got the paranoia set up, it's a swing. Petra pops the ult, and there it is, the flash in the face as she connects onto another. Now finding success on this early aggression B. Scout destroyed. Gina spotting Sarah. And Liquid for the first time, really, what feels like all map. They're having to reset, pause for a moment. Scaling up with the orb, taking some space away, going on an exploratory mission. Yeah, Issa knows that this site is being played in a retake fashion right now. That's why she's not scared to take all this space. But she's actually going to push up and try to take this fight to equalize numbers. But Roxy. Just there, ready to put that pressure. The this other, the rest eight. of the team, sorry, is going to be ending out. towards this beat because they couldn't get that A space. They wanted to do some out. sort of split, yeah, get some boss. sort of numbers, but now they're going to have to do something desperate to get these. This looks like desperation. Spamming through, I thought, for a moment. And we're going to commit. Oh, Petra goes flying out of the standing. smoke into her death. And Eugene is left in a 1v4. Not going to come to fruition. G2 punch back. Yep, what a round G2 finally gambling on the right call, the right setup, the right trap play towards that B. Just walking up and instantly using Yuto off of contact. That was really, really good. This is something that, I mean, TL loves to use heavy B main pressure in order to force the other team to rotate or to get more information or to think that they're going to be ending towards that site. So, 
It's going to be interesting to see if TL is going to commit to keep doing this method, and it looks like they are. They're one 3 one towards that game. And so all this noise outside of A main is going to be communicated, and they're going to know that they're heavy. Maybe a speed up, maybe a C split, maybe going through the door and farming these Scout orbs. I mean, they know that they're pushed up towards A main. Screen down. The longer they wait here on this freeze, the more the pressure feels weighted by G2. You start to see some of the spam. Issa gets tagged up. Yeah, they're close. If there was doubt before, it's confirmed now. Yep, TL falling back to regroup towards that A main. They're hearing a lot of movement, and they're not scared to re-clear this. It's going to be a 3v1. Glance just sitting here, trying to hold by herself. But if they burst with a flash or some sort of util, it's going to be over. Massive. Oh. Not able to get the second. Here comes the party. Whoa, we're investing the ult here. They want to push forward. The site's going to be entirely open. And it does, there is a setup for a late flank out from Jujina. See on the minimap, she's creeping up towards B main. Keep a close eye on her. They've dropped the pit. They have a lot of tools here to convert this round. Yeah, this post plant's going to be a little bit scary. Jujina is close, but she's also just a tiny bit too far. She saw stars on her to delay that post plant. These three players, they have to delay for as long as possible in order for this lurk to be effective. Every second that ticks away, a little bit of space is taken. And the pit continues to be a problem. It persists. Petra finally getting onto there. But Issa's still up. And now the flank is coming through. The pit's going to come down. But Eugenia's timing is perfect. She's got to hit the spam. And she does. Eugenia! The Red Bull clutch for Liquid just at the right time. My goodness, exactly like I'm saying, they have to delay for long enough. The Astra Star, the Astra Lurk, absolutely beautiful, stunning round from Jujina. Her teammates dropping dead, but it doesn't matter. Blue will eventually delay for just about long enough. This is such a beautiful spray down. It wasn't even planted for her, but it does not matter because that spray was just beautiful and now we have another force buy coming in from G2. I say force buy because Mimi she oh, really yes. has that sheriff towards that A site. Convinced that it's the right time to invest. Drop the nade. We haven't really seen an aggressive C hit. Petra's already fallen. I've got your trail. I mean everything's working for Team Liquid now. Not gonna have any late flank or anything like that this time around. G2 are, are much better poised to fight back. Sky Never mind. For the street take, Bastada is in their face. The nade in their lap dissuades, and then she takes more. This is just so aggressive and so confident. Yeah, I mean, they know that they have to play up once they've lost one of their post plants ah, on Jujina, but bro. Bastarda, I don't even think she's pushing for space. I think she's pushing because she's feeling it. She knows she can get these ones and win her fights. And that 3K is so crazy, so crisp. Well, Such a good round. And honestly, because of the investment that from G2 that we were talking about at the beginning of the round, they have to cut their losses. Yeah. In another circumstance, maybe you risk it a little bit more and try to get something going. But given their force, they have to keep anything they possibly can into this next round. So you see the save come through. Liquid with the four-round lead, but G2 will have two rifles going into the next. Yep, it really goes to show. I mean, G2, they're losing this momentum. Their buy is rough. The plays are rough. The setups, I mean, the only thing that worked was a trap play where the other team just happened yeah. to go in their direction. You're and now right. it's like, you know, what do we do? What do we change to fix this? I mean, the holds are just so hard for G2. They have the Astra Suck. They have the Naves. They have the Mollies. Like, it's so hard to hold on the actual site unless you're fighting up into the main. So maybe a little bit more aggression. But for this round, they do have two Vandals that they saved two sheriffs, and just a Bucky on Roxy. Toxin screen down. They're expecting something aggressive. Dog forward a little bit, clearing out every corner. With that, that's another kill. Yeah, this is great for Liquid once more. Mimi trying to dodge around, try to stay alive. She is the one with the vandal. And that is the only thing left standing. What a lurk from Issa. I mean, they're making a statement here. There's no denying it. They're, they're not concerned about who's on the other side of the stage. They're not concerned about the names in the server. They're looking to make history. 
TL. Wow, that was great. I mean, they're just playing to their strengths at this point. I mean, they know when they're doing this speed main uh, trap. They know when they're doing some sort of alien fight. They've seen everything that G2 has had to offer already and has countered it. Issa with this beautiful lurk, she's taking the space. She knows that Killjoy is playing retake towards site once again. And as soon as she gets that information, she's not afraid to push up and take that free space. Really good communication from TL overall. But we now have a gun round again from G2 with four ults, Doug. They've got to convert here. And they're going to try, but they've gone aggressive off of the flash. It's gorgeous. But Stop them is here and get a couple of glances there on the trade. And now the spike out of reach. Glance able to play this really as confidently as she wants. 3v3, a lot of time on the clock to grab this spike. I don't think TL is too worried about it right now. Just holding, trying to see where the gaps are in their defenses. G2 opting to kind of Not come close yet. together, hold Cover it. I think out. that's smart. Because again, they don't have that much util to get this. They don't have flashes, they don't have dog, they don't have Roomba on the TL side. All they have are mollies and stars, which isn't really going to be the best way to retake this. This fight is going to erupt on Mount at any moment there, and there it was. Glance was in a really good spot. Sarah was there to help. Isa in the 1v2, and it's doable. Tries to land the first. Whiffs doesn't on the second. But Roxy puts a bullet between Isa's eyes as G2 get their third. Finally, the right gamble from G2. We've been talking about how they have to gamble these trap plays, these fights, these aggressions. And finally, TL fall into their hands once again. So far, the round that they're winning is when TL has just gambled right into their traps. But these kills so beautiful, so fast at G2 to come set up in a beautiful crossfire where they're ready for everything. They know there's no flashes. No one has to play anti. Everyone's just ready to swing and trade together and I think that this could be a little bit of a momentum turner for you two. I mean they desperately need it. Still in a position to keep this half competitive aggression on C. They've taken so much space already. They still have those four ults that we talked about in the previous round. Sarah might be in trouble. Although Roxy is here with her. Meanwhile, there's a fight that's gonna be happening mid as well as they've lost A. They haven't cleared tree though. And Eugene is in a spot to control the rotate. Only one is found. But that one might be enough. East is gonna have so much to do here. She understands you've got the seekers, you got a flash in your face. That's so difficult. Yeah, the reaction towards B really fast, really quick by TL, and it actually worked out great because they knew that run. everyone that pushed through C is flanking, and everyone ah, else is on A. Daiki getting the pick onto Mimi, and now this lockdown goes down just to set enough time away so they can get ready for this post plant raise. Already rotating all the way through spawn, getting that upper control. Petra coming out with the ult, but no one is close enough for her to find. She's created some space, but that's all it is, and is she expecting Bizarra, who's going to be coming around the corner. Sarah on the defuse. She's already got it three quarters of the way. Sticks in half. And Bizarra cleans things up. Yeah, the ult was used. But a great hold from Liquid. Again, these post plants are so hard for G2 to counter when TL is just getting all of that space. Again, Liquid pushing through that C link, understanding that no one is in spawn. Bastarda going for a really great spawn wrap into upward. That was all played absolutely beautifully, even though they were a player down. Jujina holding that flank, she managed to get one, but it doesn't matter because the reactions at the end of the day is what's making this team win and win over. And now we're going to see them heading towards some sort of fake A pressure from TL side towards that A main, but we still have Raze and KJ holding that C. They're getting some sort of info. The two flashes coming in from Daiki, they know that they're playing up close towards that A main based on that, and they're going to choose not to go that way. Opting to lean towards C instead. The flash coming through. Isol wants to take this fight. And, well, that might have been a bit too much, although she does have help. Jujina's coming over, pushing for mid, and they have no idea she's there. Gorgeous timing. They're playing so well together right now. Jujina's going to try to get another. Meanwhile, Daiki dies to a spit over on C. The spike is picked up. This is still winnable for G2. Yeah, 2v2, Jujina low on health. They're opting to go back towards that B. They know that KJ is on C. The, the lockdown is down. They know that Sky was pushed up towards it, but they don't know planted. that they're grouping up towards the spawn. They have a cosmic to buy, too. You want to fight it! Right on cue, the alarm bot is behind the wall, too. 
Very nicely played. Oh, she doesn't know. She had no idea. Jujina's weak. 31 HP. Waiting for the wall. Roxy's there on the swing. Dude, these G2 girls, it, it, they feel so clutch. Man, they just feel so clutch. Exactly when their team needs something big, they deliver. Yeah, for sure. I mean, on C, that was like really, really interesting because I actually saw a kill on TL going towards Sarah. Quite beautifully. He has no idea what to say, right? If <laughs> yeah. they don't win this pistol, then what? Yeah. It's over. 8-4. It is a big lead for TL. Four rounds. They win the pistol. It goes up to six. Like, that is really hard to come back from. So, yes, definitely a super important pistol. And we're going to see them doing a lot of pressure towards C, Mimi with that dog and Flash. Oh, but the rest no of the team is walked up to the thing. Oh, my gosh. They had no idea. Yeah. What a start for G2! Wow, both teams contacting up, but neither side was, I'm sorry, but Tia was not ready to see G2 on the other side of that wall. They already crossed through. They I thought the it. dog and the flash was enough pressure for them to assume that maybe there's only one player towards here. They were not ready for the Avengers to just show up at their door. That was crazy. The orb not going down until they saw someone really well played by G2. They just walked up TL. I mean, that was a mad call. Yeah. And again, a desperately needed pistol to keep things competitive, to lean into the fact that this, this map tends to lean towards the attacking side, I think is huge. Yeah, and I think that the difference between Omen and Astra here is super important because Omen can kind of TP on top of that rubble and make right. sure that those kinds of plays don't happen. Right. They don't have that Omen. They don't have that verticality ready in order to counter any of these plays. So Astra, you know, you got to be way more careful with that kind of stuff towards a main. Fighting a main is going to be a little bit harder. You're going to have to use a little bit more control. The stars, the One sucks, the remaining. stuns from Astra. You're going to have to use a lot more because you don't have that only to look over that only. Roxy was plenty of reason to smile after that round. I mean, they were decayed. They, they had no shot. Yeah. So exactly what they needed, and they've invested into it. Two Bulldogs, a Vandal, and a Guardian for the attacking side. And as is the case in situations like this, you want to get out of this as cleanly as possible, keep all the weapons that you can, and carry it into the next. Yeah. Yep, just a standard setup from TL here, looking to quickly rotate wherever the pressure goes. Sarah walking up, trying to find some sort of lurk. I mean, she only has a ghost. Not that big of a deal if she's away from her team. The dog getting all that information towards C, actually all the players on C hiding from it. TL did not give the information, but Mimi getting the initial pick onto Issa, walking up way too early. Killed. Clean shot up from Sarah, too. Dropping Jujina, alleviating some of that pressure. And now G2 should have a much more comfortable attempt at this. It, I mean, there's really no, nowhere to go. If you're trying to play backside there, you have a flash coming around one side, the nade coming around the other. That's three on the round for Mimi. And it's just Daiki that remains. And Daiki's been good, don't get me wrong. But not this one. A prime gaming flawless as G2 bridged the gap ever so slightly. I mean, you literally just talked about how G2 need that speed? pistol. Yes, yeah, like they needed it and they got it. And now there's only a two round differential. What that's felt that's like that's kind of a landslide from TL that first half, all of a sudden, just like that, has closed down to only two rounds. Now with a bonus from G2, the gun round from TL, hopefully they can hold this down if they want to keep their lead. But G2 is looking to fight for this round. They're gonna start towards that A main. They are all grouped up. Just a standard setup after playing with KJ utility towards A. Could be a little good, could be really good to delay. Just long enough for the team to rotate. But again, this rotate is gonna be really good. Look, Viper has full C line. She knows that no one is there. Sky already flooding towards that A site. And the tree is gonna try to be held by Judina. vision. The thing too is G2, have, uh, they have to use some utility in order to take this A-main space, right? So yeah, they have that utility that they've used, they've, ga they've gained this space, and it was uncontested. So Liquid don't have to really navigate any of that stuff yet. And that forces G2 to pause for just a moment. Either wait for a refreshed utility to come back up, or play around what they have left. Petra clearing out the turret. 
leaving Liquid with more questions than they have answers right now. Yeah, G2 probably gonna regress to that A because they saw the raise, they saw the KJ utility, and I lied, they're going back towards B after seeing that there's so much more pressure. Bastarda with the first kill, and now this B postman needs to have some sort of push to equalize numbers. Can Petra find any way to relieve some of this pressure? Spike planted. She's got a firing squad behind her. Look at the ones who are gonna have to go forward here. Uh, he does have a flash, but it's just a dangerous, my goodness, what a dangerous game Petra's playing. Getting healed back up. As Liquid have been patient with this one. Choosing not to strike quite yet, and it's going to be off the timing for the flank. Jujina can find some of this. It's going to be great, but they cleared the turret. Petra just snaps on Issa. That was dirty. Looking for another. The defenses have fallen apart. Daiki and Bezerra with nothing to do here. Lance and Roxy are still so healthy, but it's all on a glance. Time is short. Oh, do they have it? I... Oh my, oh my gosh! Oh my goodness! One second! The difference maker there! I mean, that was looking... I mean, TL was waiting for so long yeah. that it even gave time for... Gave you a freak, sorry, it even gave Roxy time to turn around and kill the flanker and then come all the way back and help her team on site. They took so long of that. That was super risky. They were definitely cooking no, some sort of retake yeah, no, on that. No, no. But either way, round goes to TL. Definitely super scary, but they still managed to get it to 9-6. I mean, you can see the questions on the coaches' faces, the players' faces. Would that defuse come through? Some of the narrowest of margins. And a couple of kills already being traded. The oh. difference between TL and G2, they aren't scared to fight for that B main, even yeah. if it's just with bodies. Yeah. They don't need a trap setup to do that, but the C. Oh, Petra went. And Issa went harder. The satchel out, the nade, or the ult used, it doesn't find a target. Petra pays for it with her life. You see G2 starting to explore the map a little bit more. And much like you, you've said, it's, you know, in situations like this, you have to gamble a little bit, right? You have to be willing to take a little bit more space than you normally would in order to try to equalize things and get them back on fair footing. This numbers deficit they find themselves in right now is difficult. Yeah, I mean, they're taking the site. They knew the alarm bot was there. They knew that the other team is probably gonna rotate pretty early on because they broke that alarm bot so long ago. But again, G uh, GTL, sorry, setting up for this retake. G2 is taking that space, exactly what you just mentioned, where they feel like they're pressured into doing that. TL not ready for it. G2 gets two kills right off the bat. And that's exactly what they needed. Again, back to fair footing. G2 so much healthier right now. Daiki weak, having to go forward first. Lance doesn't have a paranoia or anything like that. She almost landed the shot anyway. Issa has gotten its half. A little bit more time to take the fight. But the fight goes in favor of Glance. G2, keep it close. Wow, that was so crazy. That went so back and forth so many times. Again, TL, they keep setting up for this retake from Hev. Daiki, who's close. Bezerra, who's close, but the, yeah, the buy's not great. Yep, these sheriffs, they're gonna have to put them to work and they're choosing to start three towards the say They're gonna be fighting for this aiming pressure. And like I said, they're gonna need a lot more util to fight for this. And we see the two stars down already from Astra. Hopefully this util is enough to get them a couple of kills because that's what they really need. They're just walking up, but again, they keep doing this contact play, which just isn't working. As soon as I say that, Georgina actually equalizes numbers by getting a kill herself, but that's not what you want to do. You want to overuse your util, especially if you don't have the right guns for it. Hey, you can't even, I mean, you win the gunfight, but you're not in a position to upgrade the weapon either. This is, yes, it's a weapon out of the hands of G2 and a player off the map, but you haven't really accomplished a ton. Even with that, though, G2's they're playing this very respectfully. They're playing this very cautiously. It seems like they might forego grabbing the orb for now. Sarah's pretty close to having her pit online. Mimi is close to having her. Pulling oh. them in. Okay. That's another big one. Still no weapon upgraded, though. And yes, it's gotten a little bit easier, but there's still so much to do. 
They try to be here. You've got Bezerra. Oh, Jujino almost catching another, spamming through, left. having to deal with the turret. East is not far off. Oh. That would have been huge. But not able oh. to convert. Lance is weak, and that's a spike. Five she went down. forward, perhaps a bit too far. East and Jujina, and finally a guardian has been found. 13 seconds left. They've got to push this, and they've got to get the spike now. They can delay Ten long enough too. Left. I mean, they still have stars on the line as well. Sarah getting that spike down. That's something they desperately need. The Viper well, pit probably gonna go down towards that spawn, and Roxy getting a pick onto Isa. Oh my goodness! If they just stayed together, maybe that could have been a lot faster, a lot better of a retake. But now Jujina in a one v two. We've seen her win these. I mean, if there are allegations of you clearing calm. This would be the time to do it. In the face of a pit, with the Guardian, pushing forward, snaps the first, three down on the round. Pit still in play, and Sarah so weak. Tap the ground, and Georgina does it! A 4K, as Liquid pull off a ridiculous round. Yeah, Georgina clears calm. The Red Bull clutch for Team Liquid. Eugenia is on an absolute fire, and just like Sapphire said on that desk, we did not talk a whole lot about Eugenia before this event, but after this event, for sure she has cemented herself on this roster. She has shown why she deserves to be on this stage. Eugenia single-handedly winning so many rounds for her team thus far in this tournament. Amazing place. We've seen her timings, her lurks. So beautifully played. And look at the crowd. Look at the coaches. Look at this reaction, TL. That is going to be a hard one to lose for G2. You need to recover mentally from that one. Not a lot of time to think about it. Already into the 18th round. No ults on the side of G2. A healthy buy for everyone, you though. Should run. I lied. Sorry about that. They have the lockdown. It's going to buy a little bit of space. Tap the door, no fight found though. But there's a lot of space that's been taken away from Issa here. Two players going on the flank towards B main. I mean, they have Mimi holding it, but is Mimi gonna be enough? Issa making so much noise. Justin. Mimi getting the first initial kill, but Starda getting the trade. Whoa. The ult coming oh. off of Mimi's movement. Oh, My God. God. Bezerra, an oh, excellent counter. Strong. They tried to push forward, and it's gone horribly awry. G2 on the ropes as Bezerra gets another three. I am speechless. That round was wild. We thought it was going to go so wrong as soon as yeah. we see Bastarda miss that raise on Mimi playing for herself, but Vizera, my gosh, I mean, G2, understandably, they made a call, hey, there's two flank, we heard a raise all, you know, let's push, let's take some more space away from them, let's flip the site, especially if they're flanking, but they just weren't ready for Vizera. Park is, is able to provide some words of encouragement, but this is tough. It's almost like they're petrified. No pun intended all well. Stop. Mine, wasn't, <laughs> mine was actually an accident. I don't believe you. <laughs> We're going to start with this, <laughs> this regular 2-1-2 two, two from the defense side. KJ playing towards that C. Actually playing a full retake setup. She has this lockdown. They know that they have to push in order to get that site, but it's not a problem. Mimi starting off towards C again with that pressure. Oh, but B main, Daiki already has full control of it. This is, this is, looks just like the pistol. You remember the pistol? It was the dog towards C and they contacted up A. And that's where that fight ensued that went horribly awry for Liquid, but this time there's no one there to challenge back. You have Astra and Ray's playing that suck nade setup off contact. It's gonna be detrimental if they don't bait out that star. I mean, it's gonna be hard and looking like they are trying to end towards that A. The nade's coming out, the util is starting. Oh, that's really good after that try. It was the stun, it was the nade. Or excuse me, from Basada, and she gets two, but Petra's there on the counter. Daiki has Seekers, too, and invests it, understanding now that Roxy's going to be playing off. Sarah's far up. Issa, yeah, mollied off, but they're surrounding them. It's just two remaining for the attacking side. Sarah has to go aggressive here to make the play, isolate the fight, and she cannot. Liquid so close to series point. So close to forgetting all about
their third place finish last year. So close to booking a ticket to dance with Shopify. One round away. That was wild. I mean, the C setup playing passive. Uh, sorry, Daiki taking the main pressure and immediately rotating towards that A link. She knew it was going to be an A hit. They were all ready. Even though Jujina jo died on site, she still managed to get her concussed. She still managed to get herself off. And off of that, Bastarda got two beautiful kills. And we talked about the fast flooding, and TL just showed us that why they're getting so far with these retakes. They pushed so fast into that site, they didn't even have a chance to react. No way. She too, Bastarda walking up. Oh my goodness. I mean, the leader of the duel is who's had such an outrageous tournament. Just has to sit and watch. The rest of G2 again playing this quietly, much like they did in the previous round. Towards A, one Astra Star. And then two members. Posted up. There's so much space that's been taken. Jujina will fall. Bastarda close by. And instantly you see Daiki on the move, on the prowl. The alarm bot's gonna keep her back for just a moment. Oh my goodness, Bastarda, this is aggressive. The nade forward eats the paranoia, but they don't realize how close she is. Steady with the aim. The crosshair swings onto another. It's not gonna deliver. 3v3 is Daiki once again finds the perfect timing, finds the perfect One kill, and Glance right. falls. It's all on to Sarah. A 1v2, she's stunned, and she cannot it's pull it off. Way. Team Liquid do the unthinkable. The Dark Horse pushes forward and advances. What a show, TL showing out.